Ha? Baka kaya ko yun. Ayan, may pumunta lang na taga ICTV ni Kev. Nag-meet na na. Ayan. So, yung ating first topic for uh, ME Lab 2 is the internal combustion engine. <clears throat> so, ito ay recap lang din. Kasi ito ay na-discuss na din naman ninyo sa inyong um, combustion. Ayan. So for uh, the definition of the heat engine, it is a device which transforms the chemical energy of a fuel into thermal energy and uses this energy to produce the mechanical work. So it has two classif- uh, two types of uh, heat engine. So we have the external combustion engine and the internal combustion engine. <clears throat> so the definition of the external combustion engine, so the products of combustion of air and fuel transfer heat to a second fluid, which is the working fluid of the cycle. So, yung mga example natin dito is the steam engine or in steam turbine plant. So, this is uh, the heat of combustion is employed to generate steam, which is used in piston engine. So, it's either reciprocating or in rotary type. And then, it is uh, in a closed cycle gas turbine, the heat of the combustion in internal furnace is transferred to gas, usually air, which uh, the working fluid of the cycle. And then yung internal combustion en- engine naman natin um, take place inside the cylinder and are used as the direct motive force. So usually yung external combustion engine naman natin is outside the cylinder. And then we have different um, types according to different usage ng ating um, <clears throat> internal combustion engine. Ano? So nandito siya. Yeah. So meron pa dito yung mga part sa babang part nito na tinidiscuss din yan. So, but for uh, now, tingnan natin yung comparison ng ating external combustion engine at saka ng ating internal combustion engine. Ayan. So, ang comparison natin dito is external combustion engine, uh, it is outside the engine cylinder. Well, dito naman, sige. And then, sa internal combustion engine naman is inside the engine cylinder. And then sa external combustion engine, the engines are running smoothly and silently due to outside combustion while yung ating internal combustion is very noisy operated engine. Nakita po yun. So kapag external, siya ay silently due to outside combustion while sa internal combustion, very noisy naman siya. Then for external, we have higher ratio of weight and bulk to output due to presence of auxiliary apparatus like boiler and condenser hence it is heavy and cumbersome while yung at internal combustion engine it is light and compact due to lower ratio of weight and bulk to output so kung pagbabasehan natin yung bigat ng mga engine mas mabigat yung external compared sa internal combustion engine okay and then next is yung working uh, pressure and temperature inside the engine cylinder is low Hence, ordinary alloys are used for the manufacture of engine cylinder in its parts. While yung working pressure and temperature inside the engine cylinder is very much high, hence special alloys are used. Ayan. So since kung mapapansin ninyo, dun sa ating internal combustion engine, di ba parang nag, uh, kinocompress kasi nyo yung mixture ng air at saka ng fuel natin. So kaya yung ating uh, working pressure and temperature talaga dapat ay high. Para makapag-generate tayo ng mechanical energy dot. <coughs> and then, for external um, combustion engine, it can use cheaper fuels, including solid fuels. Yeah, so mas mura daw ang uh, nagagamit na, na fuel for the external combustion engine, while sa combust- uh, internal combustion engine naman, um, high-grade fuels are used with proper filtration. Yeah. Kaya kung mapapansin ninyo kapag kayo ay um, yung mga, para sa may mga sasakyan, di ba? Usually mga uh, ginagamit dun is mga high-grade fuels. Ano? And then for the efficiency, mas mababa yung efficiency ng ating um, external combustion engine. So meron lang siya, nag-range lang siya sa 15 to 20% na efficiency. While sa internal combustion engine naman is mas mataas siya compared doon sa ating external since ang na-accumulate niyang efficiency is more on 35 to 40% siya. And then, um, requirement of water naman 
is mas mataas yung sa external combustion engine compared dun sa ating um, internal combustion engine. <clears throat> and then for high starting torque naman ng ating external and sa ating um, IC or yung ating um, internal combustion engine, siya ay not self-starting. Ayan. And then we have the components of reciprocating engines, internal uh, combustion engine. So, yan siya. Ayan. So, para mas maintindahan natin itong, um, <coughs> itong um, comparison ng ating external combustion engine at internal, so meron tayo ditong Ayan, meron tayo dito video presentation. Wait lang. Parang mas nakakaantok yun. Part na pagpapanakot ng kanito. Wait lang guys. Ano nakikita nyo sa screen? Yung YouTube video ko. Ayan. So, yan yung ating um, difference between uh, the internal combustion engine and the external combustion engine. Tignan nga natin kung may volume. Means, may audio ba? combustion engine and EC engine. Meron po. External combustion engines in the detail. Here in this figure, you see this is the internal combustion engine and this is the external. So why it's called internal and external combustion engine that I also discuss in this video. So on the left side, I return this point of the IC engine means internal combustion engine and on the right side, it is the EC engine that is means external combustion engine. So from its name, we can understand that the combustion is takes place inside the cylinder then it is known as the IC engine. So here I written this point combustion of the fuel takes place inside the cylinder means name is suggested internal means inside and external means outside the cylinder means it is the depend on the process of combustion if combustion is takes place inside the cylinder then it is known as the IC engine and combustion of the fuel takes place outside the cylinder then it is known as the external combustion engine or in short it is known as the EC engines. So here I show you the figure of IC engine means internal combustion engine. So in a internal combustion engine we use the fuel like a petrol, diesel or gas. Okay. And the petrol is supplied with this air. So here the mixing of the sorry combustion of the fuel is takes place. And due to this combustion high pressure is created and these high pressure gases is applied the force on this piston. And piston is produced Sorry, piston is rotated this shaft and shaft is produced some work done. So mechanical power is produced by using the IC engines. The hot gases are subsequently expand to develop the mechanical power means the combustion gases expand. Okay, then we produce the some mechanical power on the shafts. And it is generally used in our bike and car and different transportation devices. Because its size is compact compared to the external engines. So external engine is right now not is used in a any automobiles vehicles. In earlier case, the IC engine is used in the locomotive trains. So in a 40 to 50 years back, the, the steam engine is used into the railway to run the train. But now, right now in train is run by using this electric engine. That is by using the electric power. So in a train here you see in this figure, the combustion is takes place outside the cylinder. So where is the cylinder? This is the cylinder and piston arrangement. Okay. So this energy or heat energy of this combustion gas is supplied to the water and water is converted into the steam and steam is supplied as a fuel inside the cylinder. So combustion is takes place outside the cylinder. This is a cylinder and combustion is takes place here in the furnace and it is known as the external engine. So external combustion engines are not suitable for mobile plants means for a transportation purpose because of these have a heavy and bulky in the size. And the IC engine are smaller in size, that's why it is used in a, our transportation vehicles and different automobiles vehicles. Now, before moving ahead, I request to like the video and subscribe the channel for watching the more video related to mechanical engineering. 
you also visit the playlist to watch the various subject of mechanical engineering like the elements of mechanical engineering basic mechanical engineering ic engines rapid so you visit that yeah. and air conditioning so you also lots of subject is available so you visit that now in a ic engine temperature and pressure is higher inside the cylinder in a ic engine temperatures and pressure is lower compared to the ic engine now in a internal combustion engine the working fuel may be petrol diesel or various type of the gases that is already we use in our bike and car that is petrol diesel and gases are used in a external combustion engine working fuel that steam now the steam is produced by using the burning of coal wood or any another waste okay so main fuel energy use is the coal or a wood and this heat energy of the coal and wood is supplied to the water and water is converted in steam and this steam is supplied inside the cylinder that's why here written the working fluid is a steam it required a less space and external combustion engines required a larger space that we already seen in this uh, image so in our bike or a car the engine require a small space but in earlier case that is a steam and external combustion engine is used in a railway or in a trains to run it okay now external combustion engine right now used in a gas power plant and a steam power plants capital cost is relatively low for a internal combustion engine and for external combustion engine capital cost is relatively high now ic engine starting of the engine is easy and quick so as you know that you can start your bike or a car by just moving the key or by giving the accelerator so it is easily start so we are not require any more times but in external combustion engine it required a more time because the steam is generated by burning of the coal or wood so it require lots of time to start it because burning of the coal and woods are take the much time so it starting of the engine is required time thermal efficiency is high because the combustion is takes place inside the engine so there is a no loss of thermal energy means less loss of thermal energy compared to the external engines in external engine thermal efficiency is low because the combustion is takes place in a different place then after this heat energy is transferred inside the cylinder so losses are increased due to the transportation of the heat energy so thermal efficiency is lower for external combustion engine now power develop per unit weight of this engine is high means power developed by the internal combustion engine is higher compared to the external combustion engines in external combustion engine power develop per unit weight of this engine is low and the last point is fluid cost is relatively high so which fuel is used in a internal combustion engine that is a petrol diesels and gases so they are costlier and the fuel use or the fuel cost is relatively low in external combustion engine so which fuel is used in a external combustion engine it is a coal it is a wood or some waste energy is used so cost of the coal and woods are comparatively lower than the petrol diesels that is used in a internal combustion engines so thank you for watching this video if you learned then like the video subscribe the channels ayan so yun yung ating Yeah, hindi yun yung ating ano din, difference between internal and external combustion engine. So parang inulit lang din yung may mga deliskas natin, ano? Ay, may question ba kayo? Wala pa naman po, ma'am. Wala pa naman. Okay, so yung next part natin is the main components of the reciprocating internal uh, combustion engine. Ayan. So, first one is the different, uh, ayan nga, different parts. So, first is the cylinder. So, cylinder, so ito yung part na to yun. Ayan. Para meron ako din yung video din with respect to this one. Let me check. Ayan. Oh, wala. Sige. Ayan. <clears throat> Ayan. 
Ayan. So, cylinder is the main part of the engine inside which piston reciprocates to and from. So, it should have high strength to withstand high pressure above 50 bar and temperature above 3 at 2,000 degrees Celsius. So, the ordin ordinary in engine is made of cast iron and heavy-duty engines are made of steel alloys or aluminum alloys. So, in the multi-cylinder uh, engine, the cylinders are cast in one block so another ano siya, type of uh, cylinder then anyway, which is natawag natin siya cylinder block and then um yung cylinder natin on this image is itong part na to yeah and then for the cylinder head so the top end of the cylinder is covered by the cylinder head over which inlet and exhaust valve so yon itong part naman na to yon itong taas na to, which is nandito yung ating exhaust valve, yung inlet valve, at saka yung ating spark plug and injectors. So, nandito din yun. Ano. And then, ang ginagamit naman natin dito is uh, copper for asbestos uh, is provided between the engine cylinder and the cylinder head to make an airtight joint. So, kailangan natin ng airtight joint since uh, meron tayong ina-achieve dyan na certain pressure para ma-achieve natin or ma-trigger natin yung spark plug natin para magkaroon ng combustion na uh, effect doon. <clears throat> ano, and then next is this, the piston. So ito yung moving, moving ano natin, element. So yung piston transmit the force exerted by the burning of charge to the connecting rod. So usually made of al aluminum alloy which has a good heat conducting property and greater strength at higher temperature. So, ito yung ating piston naman natin dito is this one. So, ang kanyang uh, motion is itong pataas baba lang na to. Ayan. And then next is the piston ring. So, these are the house, these are house in cir circumferential groups provided on the outer surface of the piston. So, yun siya. Nandito naman siya sa may outer uh, surface ng ating piston. So, meron yung piston ring uh, to provide uh, parang airtight lang din siya doon. Ano? To prevent leakage of uh, oil or ng ating fuel. Yan. So, yun yung kanyang purpose nun. ano And then, next is the connecting rod. So, familiar na din naman kayo kasi itong part naman na ito is parang related naman siya sa machine elements. Ano? Yan. So, connecting rod, we have also the crankshaft and then crankcase and yung flywheel natin, yan. So, itong mga flywheel pala guys, since ngayon pala kayo nagmamachine design one, ayan, may encounter nyo siya. Ah, design one ba yun or sa design? Basta yung may competition yung mga flywheel, yung mga nakakastress na mga machine components din. So, ayun. And then, uh, other terminologies used in the internal combustion engine. Ayan. So, cylinder bore, the piston area, stroke, dead center, bottom, uh, dead center, top dead center. So, yung mga ibang mga terms na dyan or term, uh, yung ibang terms na nandito dito is, uh, hindi na din ganun ka unfamiliar sa inyo since, Ayan, yung mga bottom dead center. Na-discuss yun na yun sa inyong um, machine elements, sa combustion nga. Ayan. So, inulit lang natin dito. And then, we have the four-stroke engine. So, sa so four-stroke engine, we have um, its cycle of operation. So, tinawag siya na four-stroke engine since yung kanyang, um, yun nga, cycle of operation is completed in four strokes. So, four strokes meaning meron din tayo dyang dalawang revolution nung piston. Ano? So, kung mapapasin ninyo based on this images, again, so the first stroke is the suction stroke, which is kung mapapansin ninyo dito sa image, yung suction valve natin is open, while yung ating um, exhaust valve naman dito is closed. And then, um, charge consisting of fresh air, mixed with the fuel, so itong pumapasok dito sa ating cylinder, is mixture na siya ng air at ng fuel. 
And then, um, so pag uh, top, bottom to down, so ibig sabihin ay pababa, pababa yung ating um, piston, yung kanyang movement or motion. And then after nung ating suction stroke, ang next is to compression stroke. So in this, um, in this stroke, ang mangyayari is yung dalawang valve, yung ating suction at saka yung exhaust valve natin, is magko-close naman siya ngayon. So kapag nag-close yung dalawang yun, aangat naman ngayon yung ating, so yun yung ating compression stroke, aangat yung ating piston, and from that, um, parang tinataas natin yung kanyang uh, pressure at temperature. Ano? And then at a certain pressure, mag matitrigger ngayon yung ating um, spark plug. So mag ignite siya, and then pag nag-ignite yun, magkakaroon ngayon ng combustion doon sa ating cylinder na yun. And pag nagkaroon na ng combustion, doon naman papasok yung ating expansion stroke. So still, parang valve natin, yung ating exhaust and yung ating um, suction valve is nakaklose pa din siya. Ano, and then yung high pressure of burnt gases for uh, force, the piston towards the BDC and hence power is obtained at the crankshaft. So magkakaroon ng power sa crankshaft which translate yun yung ating parang um, magkakaroon tayo dun ng mechanical energy. Ano? <clears throat> and then um, last stroke is the exhaust stroke. So since tayo is exhaust stroke na siya, bubukas ngayon yung kanyang exhaust valve pero yung suction valve natin ay nakaklose. So yung brain gas is expelled out due to the movement of piston from BDC to top dead center natin. Yun. And then, since cycle lang siya, kapag siya ay nag, uh, nabuksan na yung ating exhaust valve, yon babalik na lang siya ulit sa suction stroke. Hanggang sa um, continuous lang yun eh. Since cycle nga siya, di ba? Ayan. And then, next is the two-stroke engine naman. So, sa two-stroke engine naman, uh, no piston stroke or suction and exhaust operations. Suction is accomplished by air, compressed in crankcase, or by a blower. So, induction of compressed uh, air removes the products of combustion through exhaust ports. So, transfer port is there to supply the fresh charge into the combustion chamber. So, para mas maintindihan po natin itong two stroke since um, ayun lang siya. Meron ulit ako dito ng video. Presentation. Pagka pa rin Ay, hindi pa pala yun doon. Mali yung aking tanong. Yung ano, itong sa may two-stroke at saka four-stroke, ay i-ano ko na lang siya. Ipopost ko na lang sa inyong um, Google Classroom. And also yung video na pinlay ko kanina. Yan, ano. So for now, ito muna nandito ako, yung nalistahan. Itong mga nandito is usually a um, four stroke at saka two stroke. Pero kung mapapasin nyo, usually silang dalo ay nag-oppose lang sa bawat isa. Ano? So, kagaya dito, so four stroke piston to revolution of crank shop. While sa two stroke engine naman, we have two stroke and one revolution. And then sa ating uh, four stroke, one power stroke in every two revolution of crank shop. While dun sa isa naman sa two stroke is one power stroke in each revolution of crank shop. And then for four stroke heavier, tapos ang two stroke is lighter. And then power produced is less for four stroke, tapos ay uh, power produced is twice than the four stroke NG. Ayan, so kapag four stroke heavy and bulky, pag two stroke light and compact, hindi ka mapapansin ninyo, magkabaligtaran ng sila. Ano? Ayan, kagaya sa four stroke lesser cooling daw. And then sa ating two-stroke naman ay greater cooling and lubrication requirement. 
And then that's the rate of wear and tear, higher rate of wear and tear naman for two stroke. And then higher initial cost for the four stroke and cheaper initial cost for the two stroke naman. Then volumetric efficiency is more due to greater type induction for four stroke. And then um, less naman daw yung volumetric efficiency for two stroke. Ayan. And then thermal efficiency is high for the four stroke. And also part load efficiency better. Tapos sa uh, two stroke naman, efficiency is low. And then part load efficiency is let, uh, lesser. And then it is used for efficiency. So ginagamit daw yung four stroke kapag ang kailangan ninyo ay efficiency. Kapag important yung efficiency. Pag two-stroke naman, usually important siya kapag ang i-consider ninyo is yung low, ang cost, compactness, and if lightweight uh, ang kailangan ninyo. Okay, so yung ang if, uh, importance niya kapag efficiency yung kailangan ninyo, ang gamitin nyo is four-stroke engine. So kapag ang kailangan nyo naman is low cost, compactness, and lightweight, two-stroke yung magamitin. And yung mga example natin na gumagamit ng mga four-stroke engines are cars, buses, trucks, tractors, industrial engine, aeroplanes, power generations. Yan. While yung gumagamit lang ng mga two-stroke engine, kung mapapansin ninyo, is mas maliliit compared to sa na-mention natin ng example. Ano? So dito is mga loan mowers, scooters, motorcycles, mopeds, propulsion, ship, and etc. Ayun, so yun yung uh, difference ng ating four-stroke and yung Again. ating two-stroke engines. Ayan. And then, um, we also have the SI engine and the CI engine. So for this one, Okay, there now. Is it? Again, so for SI engine, ah, the working cycle is auto cycle. Ramos. And CI naman is diesel. So ang ginagamit natin na um na fuel for SI is the petrol or gasoline or high octane fuel is used. Diesel or high satin fuel naman is used sa CI engine. So para mas maintindihan natin yung um, comparison nitong dalawa, meron ulit ako dito ng video. Celos? Yes. Alavera? Valves? Saan yan? Okay. So, tayo Differences between petrol and diesel engines. We all know that diesel engines are lower revving and more fuel efficient than petrol engines. But do you know exactly how and why they're different? If not, then let this video be your ultimate guide. Petrol, aka gasoline, and diesel engines operate on the same four-stroke cycle. This starts with the intake stroke where the piston descends, sucking air into the cylinder through open air intake valves as fuel is injected. This is followed by the compression stroke where the valves close and the piston goes goes back up the cylinder to compress the air and fuel mixture. The third step is the power stroke, where the mixture is ignited to force the piston back down the cylinder. And then the final exhaust stroke occurs, where the ignited fuel and air mixture is pushed back out of the cylinder by the piston through the exhaust valves. Where petrol and diesel engines differ is how they ignite the air and fuel. To understand the difference, we need to understand the self-ignition temperature. This is the temperature at which an air-fuel mixture will ignite without the use of a spark plug purely due to compression. It's this compression that allows the air and fuel mixture to ignite in a diesel engine without the need of a spark, because the greater compression, the higher the temperature. That's why diesel engines have higher compression ratios compared with petrol engines that don't compress the air and fuel mixture to the point of ignition. If you don't know what a compression ratio is, let me quickly explain. Simply put, it's the ratio of the maximum to minimum volume in the cylinder. So a ratio of 10 to 1 means that when the piston is at its lowest point, there is 10 times as much volume as when it's at its highest point. To give you an example of compression ratios, a 2015 VW Golf TSI has a compression ratio of 9.6 to 1. 
while a 2015 VW Golf TDI has a compression ratio of 16.2 to 1. Again, a diesel will have a higher compression ratio to ensure that the air and fuel mixture is compressed enough to the point of ignition, while a petrol engine uses less compression and is ignited by the spark plug. Though no longer true for all modern oil burners, another significant difference with a diesel versus petrol engine is that diesels lack a throttle body. This means that when you press on the accelerator pedal, the fuel injectors simply supply more diesel to create more power. Petrol or gasoline engines, on the other hand, require a throttle body. As you press on the accelerator pedal, you open up the throttle and allow more air to flow into the engine. More air means the injectors send in more fuel, and more fuel means more power. Where petrol and diesel engines differ again is how they're able to engine brake, where you lift off the throttle in gear to slow the car down. In a petrol vehicle, engine braking is achieved because as you lift off the throttle, the throttle body closes, creating a vacuum between the throttle body and the cylinders to slow the car down. In a diesel engine vehicle with no throttle body, engine braking occurs during the compression stroke, where the exhaust valve is open to allow pressurized air to escape. And the reason engine braking with diesel engines is so loud is because you're hearing that compressed air leaving the exhaust. So why exactly are diesel engines more efficient than petrol engines? One of the many reasons is down to the fuel itself. Diesel is comprised of more long-chain hydrocarbons, which simply means it's got more energy than petrol. In fact, it contains about 15% more energy by volume, roughly 36.9 megajoules per litre compared to petrol 33.7 megajoules per litre. Diesel engines are also more efficient because of the thermal efficiency gains you get from igniting the air with high compression, rather than a petrol engine's lower compression ratio that requires a spark for ignition. The higher compression ratio, longer stroke, and typically higher turbo boost pressure of a diesel also allows it to produce more torque at lower RPM than a petrol engine, meaning that less fuel is needed to move a car. Another reason why diesels are more fuel efficient is their tendency to be turbocharged. And that's because a turbo feeds compressed air into the cylinder, which helps the piston descend into the cylinder, therefore saving energy. So now that you know the inner workings of a petrol versus a diesel engine, which one are you a bigger fan of? Let us know in the comments below, and remember to give this video a lovely thumbs up. Audi R8 V10 Plus, 8,700 RPM. The 610 horsepower. Ayan. So yun yung ating difference ng ating gas at saka diesel engine. So diga, parang naririnig ko kasi sa mga car guys kong friend. Parang mas ano daw, hindi na parang sinasabi na kapag dogas yung, yung engine, yung ginagamit sa nagasulina ng mga sasakyan, parang more on kumakain na ng pera pag gas. So, yun pala yung reason na ano. So, pag diesel, mas nakakatipid siya dahil mas malaki yung energy na uh, nabibigay ng diesel. So, kaya mas mura siya compared sa gas. Uh, I mean, kapag kayo ay nagko-consume noong diesel compared sa gas. Ano? Yung pala yung kanilang reasoning doon. And then, um, ay mag-11 na. So, since tayo ay patapos na ang ating time, itutuloy na lang natin siya by next meeting. Ano? And then, yung mga pin-reset ko na video is ipopost ko na lang din siya sa inyong Google Classroom para pwede ninyo siyang balikan. Share ko lang. Share ko muna. Okay. Ayun. So, may question ba kayo? Next is the quizzes. So, quizzes. May question. Wala naman po. Then, also, we have recitation. Okay. So, ipopost ko siya. Ipopost kayo mga video. Every discussion. So, recite time na recite. Ano kasi recorded niya. Next. Next natin ay, so, yung activities pala, uh, so, so, uh, pag online, we have, uh, we have a class, so, so, kung hindi makapag-meet si ma'am, kayo naman, ay, Tuesday. Ayan, so, yun na lang muna for today. May question kayo? Na, hindi makapag-meet, dahil kung ano, so, wala naman pa. Activities, post-test, class, yes, po. Fine. Ano, 
Ulat as second okay. one. Wala naman pong question pa po. Okay. Arsion 3. Ayun. So, if wala, di, ipopost ko na lang yung video sa inyong mental classroom. So, pag may free time kayo, um, please feel free na panoonin siya. Ayun. So, yun lang naman for today. Thank you everyone. Pero ngayon po, ay na